be careful because the sins you commit could affect others as well. I'd like to give any honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushua, Bashim, Kabodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS that rule well in truth and sincerity. I'd like to give citations to the Shepherds of Berea Camp. Salutations to the House of David, that will have died, man, woman, and children, I did push in his word in truth and sincerity. Salutations to the whole elect, man, the most I raise you up in a speedy fashion. It's the priest, Karal Kakahan. And we're going to start off here on 1 Kings 17 and 5. Okay, and basically what's going on is right now you have a famine going on, okay, with the prophet, in the time of prophet Elijah. In the time of prophet Elijah, okay. <clears throat> Where the Mosai was keeping uh, his prophet fed, okay? You know, he fed him in the morning, he fed him in the evening by uh, using a raving, okay? To pretty much drop off food. And at the same time, he was able to, you know, get his water from a brook, all right? So now we're going to, uh, let's start right here at verse 5. It says, First Kings 17 and 5, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook, uh, Sheref. That is before Jordan. Verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So the Mosai was keeping his prophet fed, man. Just like the Mosai is going to keep his prophets and the ones that constantly diligently go out there on the highways and byways and profess his name. Not through just uh, saying the name, but through deeds as well. He's going to keep us fed in, those in these times as well. In the time that we're about to embark upon. Verse 7, it says, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Okay, so the brook dried up, and this was uh, pretty much the water supply that Elijah was getting his uh, water from. Verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon. And dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to abstain thee. Okay, pretty much to uh, take care of him. It says, verse 10. So he arose and went to Zareph. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. That I may drink. Right. So he um, told this woman to fetch him basically some water so he could have something to drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. So he get something to eat. Right. Verse 12. And she said, as the Lord thy power liveth. Right. So pretty much this was her, you know, saying, hey, I'm telling you the honest truth right now. I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a crust. Basically just saying, you know, she just had a little bit of uh, flour, okay, and a little bit of oil in a uh, crust. Probably like olive oil, something like that. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. You see, so already right there, that shows you that she was starting to lose faith. Why? Because there was no water. There was a famine going on. Okay, so she probably like, listen, this is our last meal. So I'm just getting ready to feed my son this last meal, you know, and then I'm just prepared to die with my son. Okay, verse 13, it says, And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. You know, and that's another thing, too. It shows you that, uh, well, you know, let me continue on. It says, and bring it unto me, and after, and after make for thee and for thy son. Verse 14. For thou say of the Lord power of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crush of oil fail until the day that the Lord send of rain unto, unto the earth. You see, so he pretty much told her through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh, I'm telling you. When you make this meal, guess what? Your flour is not going to decrease and your oil is not going to decrease. It's not until when the Lord starts to bring down rain. Okay? Basically meaning that, yo, you're going to stay fed all the way until the Most High uh, brings down rain. It says, verse 15, And she went and did according to the sayings of Elijah. And, sh and she and he and her house did eat many days. You see that? 
So, and this is just like a side topic. This is not the main topic I'm talking about, but that in itself lets you know the power of faith, man, and the power of miracles. Because here it is. The Most High can allow, no matter how small, you know, uh, the situ no matter how uh, dire the situation the situation may seem, the most I can always provide a way for you to escape it, okay? And always uh, uh, provide you certain substances to keep you alive, okay? So in this case, you know, she, you know, was lacking faith at first, like, yo, I'm about to just make this last meal for my son and myself, and then we're going to die. But what happened? You know, the most I spoke to his prophet Elijah and said, yo, listen, that that flower is not going to uh, uh, decrease and neither will that oil, you know, and I'm going to keep you and your family sustained, you know, and it only made sense because guess what? They were keeping Elijah sustained, you know, physically through uh, eating, eating and drinking. Right. Which also lets you know, you know, when you uh, help out a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. All right. But <clears throat> these are other side subjects. You know, I can do videos on this as well, but I'm going to get to I'm trying to get to this point. Just something good to look at. Verse 16, it says, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crust of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah, right? Because once again, this is not our words, these are the Lord's words, okay? We go on the highways and byways and we talk through the Holy Spirit. These are the Lord's words, not our not our own, okay? Verse 17, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so, so, so sore, excuse me, that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? You see, so she already acknowledged that he's a man of the Most High. You see that? So she could just tell through his acts, through the Most High, uh, doing what he did, that he was a man of the Lord. It says, Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Stop. So this is why I said what I said from the beginning. Be careful because of the sins you commit could affect others as well. Now, that doesn't mean that this woman committed a sin. Okay. Maybe her son could have committed a sin. Meaning what? In his past life. Or maybe she did commit a sin. But these are things that brothers have to constantly think about. You know, maybe it could have been just a lack of faith at first, even though she did, as Elijah said. There's so many things that could come to mind, but this is why, you know, through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit power, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Bashim, Kaku, Dutch brothers have to push righteousness, righteousness to the best of your ability because the Most High don't always have to come for you. You can come through your son, through your daughter, through your loved ones. They could pay for what you did, okay? So this is just another example and the fact that she said that shows what she understands the concept okay that your loved ones could pay for the actions that you make okay and that was the main uh, uh, uh topic that i wanted to bring out let's read that one more time verse 18 and she said unto elijah what have i to do with thee O thou son of the most high art thou come unto me to call my sins to remembrance and to slay my son, you see? So you can do an act so heinous to the Lord where you say, you know, I'm going to judge you for that, but I'm not going to judge you uh, through just physically uh, touching you. I'm going to touch you through your son. And, you know, for any Akim out there that I'm sure has uh, uh, um, children, you understand that, you know, it's probably, I don't have any children, but I'm sure the worst feeling you could ever have is for somebody uh, to harm your children. You feel like, it's worse than them harming yourself. You know, you would rather them harm you than your children. Okay. But let's continue on. Verse 19. And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abound and laid him upon his own bed. Verse 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my power, has thou also brought evil? Upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son. So, you know, Elijah's asking, Lord, please don't take his life away. Like, have you also brought uh, evil on this woman that you told me to come to to uh, help sustain me? Verse 21 And he stretched himself upon the child three times. Okay, and three means understanding. 
and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my power, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. You see that, man? So here it is. That child was being taken away. He was at death's uh, doorstep. Okay, and Elijah, okay, prayed to the Heavenly Father. Okay, and that's the first thing he did. He prayed to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Okay, and through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the Musa allowed, okay, Elijah to bring that man back, that child back from the dead. Okay, but it was all through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, let me finish off. Verse 23 it says, And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him. Unto his mother and Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know what thou art, a man of the most high. So basically, guess what? If there was even a shadow of a doubt, I know, I know at this time, after doing this miracle, you definitely are a man of the Lord. And that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. And you know how powerful that is, man, because even within that miracle, more people that that praise Yahweh by Shem Yahushua's name even more. Why? Because you think that woman didn't go off to tell other people the miracle that just happened with her son? Huh? Yeah, Elijah's name increased, and guess what? Yahweh by Shem Yahushua's name increased above all. Okay, as a side note, so that's beautiful. But I'll bring that out to say, you know, the fact that she had that concept, you individuals out there have to understand that the Lord can use uh can punish other individuals for what you did. Not saying that that child didn't do nothing in his past life, but and not saying both of them did anything. That could have been just used as a miracle just to show the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But still, it's not for you to be ignorant and know that, you know, you're not going to get paid back for the sins that you commit. Okay, it's a lot of things that uh, um, a lot of people do in the world. And then later on, they cry to the Lord, you know, why me? Why this? Hey, why not you? You think I ain't see what you did last year when you was committing adultery? Why not you? You know, but continuing on, we got John 9 and 1. It says, and as Yahweh Shah passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Okay, it said this man was blind from birth now. Okay, so keep that in the back of your head. He was blind from birth. Okay, he was born blind. Okay, he never seen the light of day. Okay, he never got to see... A son said he never got to see anything. Verse 2, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You see that? So the fact that the disciples asked this question showed that they understood the concept of reincarnation. They understood that the most I can judge a person, okay, do their children. And guess what? Also, that child could just be judged of uh, being born again in a... Uh, in a, uh, in a, um, what's the word I should say? Because just be born, being judged again by being blind, you know, by being uh, deaf, dumb, okay, can't talk, okay? So the fact they ask these questions to let you know, you know, ding, 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 something should be going off of your head. I have to be careful what I say and what I do because it not only could affect me, it could affect me, it could affect me in the next lifetime. Or affect my children or my loved ones. Anybody that I hold dear. Last one. Verse 3. It says, Yahweh shall answer, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah should be made manifest in him. You see that, man? So neither one did sin, but it was just to show that miracle, which when you continue to read on, okay, matter of fact, Mm. Yeah, because when you continue to read on, I'm not going to read all the way down. When you continue to read on, the most I end up uh, healing that man that was born from, that was born uh, blind from from uh, birth. Okay, just so that the most I could perform that miracle and exalt Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Okay. Last one. We got Deuteronomy 5 and 9. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy power, am a jealous power. Right? Meaning what? You shouldn't bow down to these false gods, these different idols, okay? This 
wicked way of living. Okay, the sinful generation, man. Okay, the sin, the sinful empire that's constantly ruling and trying to get you to sin and go off as well. It says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children into the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see, so it's so much to take with that. You know, a person can come back for what they did in their past life, and the most I don't got to get them now. Okay, the Lord don't have to get them now. You can think, you know, a lot of these individuals that you see, you know, in the rap world, that you see in the celebrity world, you know, that you see as a big influence in society, you could be like, dang, you know, these dudes, they do, they did so much wickedness, and you hear about them getting, getting, uh, getting off of so many different things, and it's like they never, and that, and that's the thing, you know, people always make it seem like uh, crime does pay. That's what they always say, like, oh, look, they live in a lap of luxury, but what you don't understand is a lot of times these individuals. The most I could judge them then in that lifetime, or you'll see certain individuals born and you're like, dang, how they was born like that? That's them paying for that last lifetime. So Lord didn't forget their sins, okay? And I, and you know, with that being said, you know, when you look at, you know, pictures like this, man, just imagine what this child did, okay? This is an actual child that's living on this earth right now, okay? This is not a made up picture. This is not no Adobe After Effects. This is actual person right matter of fact here's an article you know i'm not gonna read the article i'm gonna go all the way up here just so you can see the title of it okay you know this, this is the daily news okay this ad came out a while ago but it says boy eight whose face has been distorted by giant tumors and caused him to go blind in one eye is called a monster by cruel bullies who think he is wearing a mask you see that so look at this man look how hideous that looks it is what it is call a spade for spade look how hideous that looks man the Lord have you come back like this man he could barely see he can't see out of one eye he could barely see out the other and his face got worse over the years you see it like that but then you see some pictures look how it looks here so it's getting worse and worse and he has to and most I got have him live to 100 years old living like that man you know you talking about torturing somebody slow, but at the same time, you don't know what they did in their past life, you know, or you don't know what uh that mother or father did where it came upon the child. Okay, another one here before we close this up. You know, you got Nick Cannon who just lost his uh, <clears throat> uh what was his baby boy, I believe. Yeah, his son. Okay, that died from like a brain tumor. Look how his son look right here, man. He looked like he know he about to give up the ghost soon. He like, oh shit. He know he about to give up the spirit soon. Like, this is killing me. You know, but at the same time, Nick Cannon, okay, you're a person that should have been coming out with the truth about things that's been going on in Hollywood. You've been had shows on Nickelodeon from when you was a teenager, maybe even before that. Okay? A lot of wickedness that you pushed. So, you know, I just say that to say, you know, be careful because the sins you commit could affect others as well. Okay? And especially in these times. You know, understand that there's a cause and effect to everything, man. And ultimately, the sins that you commit can actually get you a first-class ticket to those nuclear missiles. And the last thing you want is to be shamefaced in the kingdom of heaven, okay? So with that being said, I'd like to give a fitting honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Kakodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS that rule well in truth sincerity. Salutations to the shepherds of Berea camp. Salutations to the house of David. Thou art that with God. Man, women, children, out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity. Salutations to the hopeful elect. And the most I raise you up in a speedy fashion. Till next time, Lord willing. Shalom.